Endurance Junkie Podcast, episode 44. Junkie, welcome to another episode of the Endurance Junkie Podcast, the show where I will be interviewing some of the fastest, smartest, and most inspiring people active in the endurance world today. Kieran Alger combines a passion for wearable tech with an addition to running. He's an editor-in-chief at MediaBlaze and a founder of manversusmiles.com. He covers fitness and technology trends for magazines and websites, including T3, wearable.com, men's health, and tech radar. In April 2015, Kieran will attempt to complete the toughest foot race on earth, the Marathon des Sables. Kieran, thanks for taking the time to chat here today. Now, for those of us who don't know you, can you maybe start off by telling us a bit about yourself and your sporting background growing up as a kid? Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me on. Uh, I'm 37 years old. I, I live in London. I'm a, I'm a journalist by trade. Um, I've been living in London for about 18 years. Um, before I came up uh, up here, and before I got into running, I was always really a big kind of um, football player, a soccer player. Um, and for most people who know, if you're a football player, the the one thing that you do in training that you hate doing is is run. Um, it was always the thing that I did as a as a bit of a chore to get myself um, fit. But as a result, I've always I've always done it. Um, you know, it would mainly be kind of pre-season stuff. You'd go out and, and, and run until you made yourself sick in order to, to get ready for the for the season ahead. Um, or you'd always be sort of put through this punishment before someone would put a football at your feet. And you'd always be waiting for that moment. You know, you'd want the football quicker. Um, so I've always, you know, I've, I've always known that I can do it. Um, I've always sort of managed to, to, to do reasonable distances. Um, but I never really took it um, that seriously until maybe four years ago. Um, when I sort of developed a few knee problems, um, I found that we, we played a lot of football on AstroTurf and that was causing me problems the day after. So, um, someone took me for a, for a run. I signed up for a 10 K in London. It was the a six 10 K. And as part of that, you run a course that flies by the houses of parliament here in London across Westminster bridge and past all these kind of, um, iconic sites on a beautiful sunny morning. And in that, that was my first sort of uh, sampling of the race environment and all these other crazy people who'd gotten up at um, six in the morning to travel there and, and get involved. And it was just it was just the, the best morning I'd had in a long time. Um, it was a brilliant experience. I came straight back from that race and signed up for a, another race um, called the Royal Parks Half Marathon, which follows a similar course. Um, and when I finished that, crossed the line and did what most people probably do after their first half, and thought, I have no idea how anyone can possibly do a marathon. Uh, I was completely spent, uh, broken body, really happy, but, you know, broken broken mentally as well. Um, but went straight home and signed up for the Paris Marathon after that. And then the rest is, I, I sort of trained for that, and the, the rest is kind of history. I've never really looked back. I, I think I got the bug um, pretty quickly within the last four years. Mm. Um, but the, those first couple of races you just did on, on your football fitness? Uh, yeah, I mean that. Yeah, the first couple of races, I you know the first ten k, I always knew that I would be able to cover that distance. Yeah. I trained a bit for the first half marathon, but probably nowhere near as much as I I should. Um, I made all of the the rookie mistakes of, you know, not putting Vaseline in the right places and turning up in the wrong shoes and, um, you know, basically just having to. I'd never I'd never even heard of a, of a of a carb gel or, you know, considered any of the other stuff that is now so familiar. Um, but it's there's something about the the experience of just being with all those people and the achievement that is I found really, really addictive. And it's, it's, it's the challenge and you know, individual challenge, which kind of keeps me coming back for more. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, the community is pretty important as well. And for most of us, it's not about uh, winning a race. It's really about uh, yeah, crossing that finish line and, and seeing if you can, uh, if you can do the distance. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think, you know, for, and then for my first marathon, it was very important to have um, that community angle to have people, who I knew were, were going to do the same marathon. So I went to Paris. I tried to get into the London marathon and, and, and didn't get through the ballot. And friends of mine were going to do Paris and they invited me along. And I, I remember very distinctly my first um, marathon, having a friend of mine, Andy, who, who ran me to the halfway point and kept me very honest in terms of my pacing. 
you know, he wouldn't, he wasn't going to let me go out and, and go too fast. And I left him at the halfway point and ran a, ran a good strong race and did a 3.43, which I was very happy with. But the importance of having someone alongside with knowledge and experience, like he was a 10 time marathoner and it was, you know, he's, he's one of my best friends and it was just a joy to, to be out there running with him and, and you know, you, you, you have to rely on people, I think, in, in races and people who, who have the knowledge and who've been there. It's it's really important. Oh, definitely. So how many marathons have you done since then? So since then, I've done, I've now, if you count ultras as sort of marathons, marathons and ultras together, I've done 20 um, since 2009. And uh, your best time, I think, is now a sub three since uh, this year? It is, yes. Yeah, I did. Uh, back in April this year, I managed to finally break the the, the sub three barrier and did a two fifty seven fifty six in London, um, which was which is I still sort of hold as my my best running achievement. Uh, really, really uh, amazing day, and Pain a lot of hard work. Yeah, painful. Uh, do you know what? It wasn't as painful as some of the runs that I've had. I run, I recently did the Berlin Marathon in three hours twenty eight. And it, that was far more painful. I, I went too fast in the first half and didn't quite make it. And London, I knew, you know, I think there's, I, when I got to the start line, I'd done the training right. I'd, I'd eaten right. I was, I felt confident on the start line. I've, I've actually not had that feeling so many times when it was almost sort of subconscious in my body. I, I kind of felt like I would have to sort of run a bad race. I'd have to make a tactical error if I wasn't going to make it. Um, and that's a, it's a feeling which I'm really looking to try and recreate with the way that I train now for the marathon, the Saab. And I think it's, it is really important that you get to the start line in that kind of, uh, in that frame of mind, you know, you, there's a, there's an inner confidence that you've, you've done what you need to do in training. Um, and you're going to be able to cope and, and get the result. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you touched on the subject there and I think it's the main reason why I'm having you on here today. It's, uh, yeah, your, your attempt to, uh, complete the toughest race on earth, the, the Marathon des Sables. Um, and I'm guessing most of the listeners have already heard about the race, but, uh, can you quickly tell us exactly what it is and what the distances are? Uh, yes. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it, the distance varies year to year, but essentially it's, uh, 156 miles over six days in the Moroccan Sahara, um, running up sand dunes that are more like mountains than, uh, than mole hills, um, sometimes in heats up to sort of 40 or 50 degrees. Um, the, the, the race is kind of split over, over distances, so it goes from, uh, there's a couple of, the first two days are around sort of 20 miles, 30 kilometers, and then the third day is a, is an eight, is a double marathon, essentially an 80 kilometer um, run. Then you have a day off and then there are, there are, there are shorter distances towards the end. Um, there's actually, yeah, <clears throat> after that day off, you have a, another kind of um, marathon distance and then a shorter final day. Um, you have to carry all of your own kit. So everything that you need to survive, including food, um, anything you want to sleep on or any kind of comfort, um, there's a list of compulsory items that you have to take. There's about 10 compulsory items, including a, a flare, um, compass, um, a knife. Um, and you you basically, the only comfort you get that you don't have to carry yourself is an open-sided tent and uh, rations of water that you can have at the aid stations along the way and water they give you every evening. The rest of it is on your back. So there's the weight to contend with as well. So it's a... It's a fairly, um, it's a fairly big undertaking for someone like me who's not, you know, I've done some ultras, but this would be the first time I've done a, a multi-day event, and it's certainly the first time I'll have, I'll have run in a desert. So, yeah, really looking forward to it. But it, there's a, there's certainly an amount of sort of trepidation that comes with going into the unknown. Yeah, because there, there is indeed a, quite a big gap between marathons or 50k runs to to a multiple stage uh, race. So why on earth did you get this idea? <laughs> um, I, yeah, I'm still wondering why. Um, was it a bet? Uh, no, do you know I, I've <laughs> seen some people, some uh, who've done it in the past, a couple of years before me, and I because I trained for London and because I've I've I'm sort of at a point where I've done um, a few hundred k ultras. I'm probably I sat down. I thought I'm as fit as I'm ever going to be. So if I don't do it now then it may never happen. You know, whilst I've done all the training, I've kind of feel like I've got all of that. The foundations are there. So I, I'd better make use of that and get on with it. Um, and it just seemed like the right time. 
I, I got in touch and I, I said to myself before I sent the email, if there's a place, I'll take it. If there's not, then, you know, it doesn't matter. But they came back and fortunately there was, there was a, a couple of places left and I got in. So there I am, I'm off um, and, and looking forward to it. So when, when did you start your, uh, your really specific training for it? So I've started training specifically for this from October, essentially. Because it's in April, right? Uh, well, I mean, in, I guess if, if because of the way that I run, I, I'll I'll have been running consistently throughout the year anyway. But to train for this, yeah. For, so for, it started in October, and the and the race is in April. Um, so I I started a serious structured plan of of training back in October. So what do you focus on then? It's just mainly uh, back to back runs, or um, do you go for really the long distance, or uh, how do you structure it? Well, this is this is where I've I've got a bit of a controversial approach, and this is as a result of um, some people that I've been uh, writing about as part of my sort of uh, uh, technology and, and 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 fitness tech sort of writing. Uh, I encountered some guys called Paleo Gym who are here in London, and they have a specific approach to to training people for endurance and for marathons. They trained me for London, and their approach is is very much a, a combination of eating right and also functional fitness and, and strength training um and for for the marathon de saab i'm basically doing most of my heavy work at the moment in the gym so i'm doing things like uh deadlifts and and straight leg deadlifts um building power um in the right places there's a bit of um, a crossfit uh, approach it's kind of crossfit yeah crossfit and I, endurance yeah yeah so I, and 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 I guess very, very targeted, um, weight sessions. So looking at, you know, uh, weighted lunges and, and weighted split squats, um, strengthening my, my lower back, uh, but also at the same time, combining exercises that strengthen the lower back with ones that will, that will give you strength in the glutes and build power, you know, in, in those hamstrings for when you're going to have to be lifting your feet out of that heavy sand or, you know, the sand's going to be falling away behind you as you're trying to find something to push off. And I'm doing very little running in the early stages of my plan. So I won't be running anything more than a thousand meters. Um, but when I do it, I'll be doing it with a backpack on with weight in it. And then I'll be doing it up very steep hills and, and at very, very high intensity. Wow, that is indeed a, yeah, a different approach to, to what everybody might uh, might expect. Which, which is, but yeah, I mean, it's, I, I know a few other people who are, who are heading out next year. And a lot of those guys are out doing you know, 32 milers or they're doing ultras and, and, and building that up. But I think that part of the theory is that because I already have that level of endurance that I maybe don't, I'm not starting from scratch. I, I know I can go out and run a hundred Ks and in order to get ready, I don't want to be overtrained and fatigued. So I'm getting lean. I'll be carrying, you know, the idea is the eating part of this is just a, is as important as the, the strength training that I'm doing. So I've got a very specific diet in order to get me um, to build um, lean muscle mass and to, you know, to, to drop my body fat percentage so that I'm carrying less weight around. You know, when you're going to be carrying an, an eight to 10 um, pound backpack or, you know, sorry, an eight to 10 kilo backpack, yeah. it'll probably help to not have an extra kilo of blubber around the stomach. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the nutrition that you're, that you're on now is going to be totally different than the nutrition that you're going to be using during the race, I guess. Yes. Yeah. So at the moment I'm, my approach is, and this, this again is, is kind of controversial and some people might think it a little too strict. Um, I know there are some ultra runners who sort of follow a, a similar diet, but some people are, are, are very much against it. So I've, I've cut out, uh, there's no sugar, nothing from wheat, no, no grain, no gluten, uh, no dairy. Uh, I avoid starchy vegetables, so no potatoes. Um, I guess I'm, it's very similar. It is a sort of paleo approach. Lots of lean protein from grass-fed, um, organic. You know, good good sourced um, protein, fish and, and and meat. Was it was it easy to make that nutritional switch? In, uh, or... <laughs> it's um it seems like pretty pretty complicated. I've I've done it. I did it. For, it was the same approach I did from London, and it was it was super effective. I I went. You know, I've, I've got my body fat percentage for, for London to make myself light for, for that marathon down to 10% at the start of the race from somewhere, you know, like 22%. 
so it's 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 hugely effective and actually i'm really surprised some people look at it and think well it's a very restrictive diet but i've encountered I've, you know i've discovered lots and lots of new things that i would never have eaten before and actually the the, you know, the variety of, of veg and different combinations different recipes and you know it's it's actually opened my eyes a lot and i i kind of really enjoy it um i think it does take a lot of dedication you have to be prepared you have to plan you know you it's very hard if you're traveling and you're at an airport to, to find the right things to eat or you're you know you're out for dinner with friends um but you can you can more often than not make the the, the right choices and i was a huge skeptic before i did it for london it worked for me, so I'm I'm kind of following it again. Cool. Now, when I think of Marathon de Sable, I think there's there's two aspects that that come to mind, and that's first of all um, the mental aspect of the race. I mean, yeah. it's going to be brutal for about uh, yeah a couple of days, five or six days, mm-hmm. and then um, yeah, your body care during the race because you I mean that that sand gets everywhere. So and uh, I, I saw some uh, some documentaries about the race, and uh, I think the feet are going to suffer. Um, a lot uh, when you're going to be racing so how do you deal with with that or how do you plan on dealing with that yeah i mean i i've this is something that i'm researching sort of ongoing in my preparations and i'm I'm still fairly early days um but i think you're absolutely right the in my head there are there are two things that are, are, are vital to the success in in the mds and one of them is is keeping your feet right it's you know it's an old army adage you know they protect their feet it's the thing that allows you to keep moving i think you know you don't want to get to a position if at all possible where every footstep hurts it will slow you down it will cause you know the knock-on effect of being slowed by that i think is is if you can avoid it it's, it's brilliant so my my approach at the moment is i'm i'm treating my feet um not with anything too complicated. I've, I'm basically stealing my wife's uh, very expensive moisturizer <laughs> <laughs> and using it on my feet. <laughs> um, so my first is to is to get my feet nice and soft and, and or supple mainly rather than soft. I can and hope for you that she's the one who's rubbing it in. <laughs> she's not. She won't touch. Oh. My feet. <laughs> not not the blackened toenails. No, <laughs> anymore. Um, and she, yeah, she do, she doesn't know. She won't until now that um, I'm using her moisturizer. <laughs> so I'll be in trouble. But um, yeah, to, to 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 basically get rid of a lot of the, the the hard patches, and then I'm investigating other products that people have recommended. You know, I've 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 had people tell me that there are products that are used by vets to to help um, animals when they have sore paws. Um, that are good products. So there's a there's a piece of work that's that's ongoing. And um, one of the, the big decisions that I'm going to have to make is how many pairs of socks I take. And it, you know it sounds silly, but every pair of socks adds weight. But in my mind, I think I'm gonna I'll I'll probably leave something else out of my backpack in order to have fresh socks. I've run the password and not changed my socks at key points. And that's you know if there's a bit of sand in there or a bit of moisture, they get wet. That's when the skin starts to slip, and that's when you can find trouble. So I think a fresh, you know, changing my socks regularly um, and fixing problems the minute you spot them with the feet, not leaving them for a, for a long time, not ignoring them. You know, if, if the shoe's uncomfortable, stop and, and fix it. Take the five minutes. You know, don't risk it. No, definitely. Um, how about the mental aspect? Have you got any plans on getting ready for that? The mental aspect, I, you know, one of the things that I'm, I think is going to be hardest for me that I'm going to have to get my head around is the heat and how the heat is going to affect my, my mental kind of my state of mind. I'm not so used to it. Um, and I've, I've only done a couple of, I did a, a race called the race to the stones here in the UK and it was about sort of 35 degrees. It was very humid, but the heat really, really affects my ability to kind of make good decisions. So, and that's, again, that's going to be very, very important. I will, I, I'm, my plan is to basically give myself little reminders. Um, either have you know an old school stopwatch that beeps with an alarm at certain points when I have to eat or when I have to drink, or have you know certain checks that I do every now and again to make sure that I've got getting the right amount of water in and the right amount of food. And then I, I think you know I'm I'm pretty tough, but I've got little tricks like you know there are times if if I'm really struggling I find you know you put you crack a smile for five to ten you know meters and it can help you get over that 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 negativity 
and also you've just got to be very very kind to yourself I think it's it's very easy out there to beat yourself up when you feel like you're running badly or you're moving slowly or you know you've 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 had to walk again and I you've, you've got to forgive yourself and say you know it's okay and it's fine and you're you're doing well and just keep pushing forward um so I, I do have some of those sort of mental tactics that I've used in the past that I think come in very handy yeah all right I guess it's a bit early days though to talk about race strategy and, and race expectations I've yeah I'm I again I'm debating how to approach it so there's two camps you know some people go to race some people just go to finish I think I'm somewhere in the middle um and if my training's right you know, I'm I mean, I'm not going out there to, by any means to sort of win it but I think it would be a huge achievement to try and get a, a top 100 spot and and try and be to and try and be quick that said I don't want to ruin and the race and not finish by by being over ambitious so I'll be happy with the finish and if I'm out there and I'm feeling good maybe I'll maybe I'll push on if my training's been right but finishing is the key so whatever it takes to get over that line each day and get up and go again is is kind of um at the moment is what I'm thinking yeah so you'll you'll definitely be happy with uh, just finishing the race absolutely yes yeah yeah that's the goal yeah is that uh yeah you got anything else on on the bucket list are you thinking beyond the uh, marathon de sable I I can't well yeah actually <laughs> this is a bit crazy when I get back from the marathon de sable uh, I think it's six days later I'm flying to Boston to do the Boston marathon and then a week after that I come back and I'm going to do the London marathon so I'm going to do three of the three of the most kind of iconic races there are um, in three continents in the space of about twenty days um, mainly because I've quite qualified for Boston in London and it's so I may never be that fast again. I may never qualify again. So I feel like I have to go and do it. Yeah. And if I'm going to do Boston, then I might as well do London. Yeah, yeah, you might as well. Get three in. So there, yeah, there, yeah. Boston is definitely on my bucket list, and I'm going to get a ticket off in the within the space of a week. Yeah, well, cool. Yeah, that's going to be a that's going to be a nice challenge there for you. I say, I say that now. We'll see how my feet are when I finish it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's going to be the most again. important thing. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, man, you're right. I mean, if if you got into Boston, you definitely have to go. And yeah, maybe it's just about uh, running the race and and enjoying the moment instead of uh, trying to get a PB there. Yes, yeah. I was I was speaking to, to another running friend of mine. So I said I might turn up to the start line in Boston in my marathon de Saab kit, <laughs> <laughs> just as an excuse for why I'm hobbling around. Uh, good idea. Now you've uh, mentioned it before that uh, you write about uh, yeah the latest fitness and technology trends for uh, several magazines and websites. It must be fun to receive all these free goodies to test. It's it's brilliant. Yeah, it's a, it's actually great. It can be it can be distracting at times, but it's um, it is a lot of fun. I you know I get to see a lot of the new watches that come out this today this morning. I got sent the the new Garmin Forerunner nine twenty XT, which is a a, a really sort of high end. Um, triathlon watch essentially um good for good for endurance and good for iron man um and i'll get i'll be testing that out over the next couple of weeks and it's i, I love being on top of the the latest trends and you can i'm really getting a sense of how um endurance and sport and fitness and technology are all coming together and, and it's it's really changing you know the the amount of um detail and statistics we're able to now see about how our bodies are behaving when we're out doing something is, is fantastic and I know there's a big argument to say you should leave all of your gadgets at home and don't worry about the tracking. But the other side of that, I think it's fascinating to see how high your heart rate can go when you're just doing a deadlift. It's 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 quite amazing. Yeah, no, it's definitely tools that you can use during training. I guess yeah. That, yeah, the debate about uh, using them in, in, in the race is uh, something completely different. And yeah, you have people who prefer to go by feel and others who really rely on the uh, on those on those tools, but yeah, I think especially on the bike. I mean, a watt a wattage meter, a power meter is definitely a, a useful tool to avoid uh, going into the red during during a race. Yeah, and you, I I think in training particularly, you can really target um, zones in the right way and, and make sure that your training sessions are, are are achieving the right effect, which is something I as part of the plan that the Paleo Gym guys did for me for london it was very much heart rate based so i was running at times within a, a, a bracket of two or three beats per minute in some of my sessions mm -hmm. and being able to do that and know that i'm getting the right training effect which was bespoke to me i think really really helped me achieve my goals and you're seeing more and more i mean the the, the 
we've seen the sort of running watch and the fitness wearable band sort of revolution happen the last year or so. And what's next is going to be all of the, the smart garments and, you know, um, base layers and other tops that come with far more sensors embedded where you'll be able to, you know, see how, how much power you're getting out of your hamstrings. You'll be able to, to see what effect the, a cup of coffee has had on you in the morning before you go and run on your heart rate. And those diagnostics will become available sort of 24 seven, 360. So you'll be able to get a real full picture of your health and how training is affecting you. Um, take away some of those um, subjective decisions that you make. You'll really know whether or not you're, you're tired or not. Um, or whether you're just making excuses not to hit the gym. Yeah, and no, I'm really fascinating about uh, this, especially the garment thing. You know, uh, it's going to be uh, quite interesting to see what uh, what they come up with. And to be honest, I should look into it myself. You know, with the the endurance junkie apparel brand. Uh, yeah, yeah, with, with the tri suit. So, uh, but it's yeah, it's expensive, uh, expensive stuff to get into. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Now with Christmas around the corner, so what are your uh, your must haves for uh, for the endurance junkies? Oh uh, well, I I've do you want to know what's on my list? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, list, sure. I've, because I've got marathon de Saab kit. You know, one of the things that you always get at Christmas, but they're never they're never these ones. This year, they get socks, right? Everyone gives you socks. Well, this year, <laughs> I've <laughs> I've basically put um, the X Bionic socks and the Injinji socks on my on my Christmas list for for my mum and my family. I you know as many pairs of those as I can get. That would be great. Um, because I'm hoping those might help me avoid the blisters. Um, you know, I, I, I've also slightly, I've fallen in love a little bit with a with a Polar watch, which is the Polar M400, and it's it's a fairly sort of entry level piece of kit or a mid level piece of kit, it, um, but it combines the overall sort of daily activity tracking with running and and swimming and cycling, and it's just a really really nice, really easy to use, well designed piece of kit. I, I I'm a real fan of simplicity. Um, not being too overcomplicated, especially when you know you you just want to go out and, and run rather than faff around with loads of buttons, and it's it's a really nice piece of kit. So that's one I could recommend. Um, and then one thing that I can't wait for 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 next year um, is I want to get my hands on. There's a there's a set of headphones called the, the Jabra Pulse, um, Jabra Sport Pulse that do heart rate monitoring from within your ears. Wow. And I basically just want to get a hold of those and see if they actually work. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. All right, cool. Um, yeah, that's about uh, all the time we have here today. Kieran, uh, how can people get in touch with you? Yeah, you can reach me on – I'm on Twitter. Um, it's it's at Kieran Alga, um, or you can find me on uh, my website, which is uh, www.manvmiles.com, and I'm on Instagram the same. It's at manvmiles, so any of those ways – Drop us a line, ask me some questions, offer me some advice, help me out. <laughs> I'd love to hear from you guys. <laughs> All right, excellent. I'll put those uh, links in the show notes so people can uh, quickly get in touch with you. Um, feel free to give some love to your sponsors. Yeah, I mean, I, it's a big. Uh, I've, I've mentioned them already, but the the, the PaleoGym.co.uk, those guys have a wealth of information for endurance uh, junkies and, and, and people out there trying to achieve goals and then hit objectives. So. Again, have a look at their site. Get in touch with them. They're, they've been a brilliant help, and I, I couldn't recommend them highly enough. All right. Anything else you want to plug? And um, no, I think that's that's it. That's right. good for me. All right, excellent. Well, uh, all the best with uh, with your preparation, and uh, yeah, maybe we should hook up hook up again uh, after uh, yeah the trifecta there, the Marathon de Sable, uh, Boston, yeah. and London. Yeah, I'd love to come back. If if I'm still alive, <laughs> I'd love to come back and tell you how it went. Yeah, well, even from the hospital, but there's a, there's possibilities to do a Skype call, so you no problem. You can from anywhere, yeah. Yeah, all right. Thanks, Thanks for your time, Kieran. Cheers.